Okay, so today our lesson is going to continue on with equilibrium, <clears throat> but this time we're going to look at solubility equilibrium, which, which has to do with a salt or an ionic solid um, dissociating and dissolving in water. Okay, so we know a little bit about this already from our aqueous reactions unit. Um, but when a salt, like an ionic solid, such as sodium chloride, dissolves in water, it dissociates, which means it separates out into its separate ions. So we practiced writing these dissociation um, equations in our first unit of the year. So what you do is you take the salt, so the ionic solid, in this case it's sodium chloride. We know it's solid at room temperature, and all these will be solid, and we're adding it to water. Okay, so this shows what happens when it gets added to water and, and stirred around. Well, it breaks apart into its two separate ions, sodium and chlorine. Um, and that is shown like this. So the sodium ion and the chloride ion have their charges and they're aqueous because they're dissolved in the water. So we call this a dissociation equation. And the reaction is called dissociation. Now, sodium chloride, if you were to refer to your solubility rules chart, that we used a fair bit in that first unit. Um, that's where you go through and you find out if they're soluble uh, or if they have low solubility. So if you looked up chloride and scanned across, you would see that when it's with sodium, it's soluble. So when sodium chloride's added to water, it dissolves very easily. It's highly soluble. It easily dissociates and the, um, you know, as long as you're um, within the saturation point of the solution, you can dissolve the whole amount of sodium chloride quite easily. However, there's other salts or other ionic solids that when you use, uh, use your solubility rules chart, you read across and you find that they have low solubility. So um, ones that have low solubility, such as silver chloride, um, we we know that those ones, would, if they're a product in a reaction, will form a precipitate, but um, the low solubility doesn't mean that they can't dissolve at all. It just means that they are like fairly insoluble. They will still dissolve a tiny bit, but not the way sodium chloride would. So we're going to focus our attention on these slightly soluble salts. So um, these slightly soluble salts, like silver chloride, they will dissolve a little bit, um, but they won't fully dissolve. Okay, so you'll still be left with some of that solid sitting in the bottom of the beaker or flask that just doesn't dissolve. However, what they do uh, is they reach what we call a solubility equilibrium very quickly. Okay. And what a solubility equilibrium means is that they reach a point very quickly because not much of the solid uh, dissolves where the number of uh, ions dissociating is equal to the number of ions rejoining the solid. So solubility equilibrium happens when the rate of dissociation, so the rate at which they're breaking apart um, from the solid, equals the rate at which the ions bond to make the solid again. So, you know, for every one ion that pops off and dissociates, one pops back on and rejoins the solid again. Or another word for that would be to precipitate out of the solution. So we're still dealing with these equilibrium equations and these equilibrium reactions where we've got our double-sided arrow. So we show a solubility equilibrium as an equation with a double arrow. The slightly soluble salt, silver chloride, has this solubility equilibrium at equation. Or sol solubility equilibrium equation. So again, you're just showing that this is dissociating 
into silver ions, which are aqueous, and chloride ions, which are aqueous. Okay, and the rate of the forward reaction is uh, very quickly going to become equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. So as this breaks up into silver and chloride, the silver and chloride are also joining back on to the solid or precipitating out again. Okay, so it's a dynamic equilibrium. So we'll just say rate of forward reaction equals rate of reverse reaction. So no different than any other equilibrium equation that we've looked at. So we're going to study in this section the solubility equilibria of slightly soluble salts. So ones that that would read low solubility on our chart. Okay, so they do dissociate slightly, but uh, not completely. So they reach this equilibrium very quickly. So let's just practice a few more dissociation equations just to remind ourselves how to do that. So we're going to just write the dissociation equation for the slightly soluble salt iron 3 hydroxide. So we start off with iron 3 hydroxide <clears throat> and we always put a S here for solid because this is a solid that we're adding to water to dissolve or partially dissolve. Got our double arrow, and this is just going to break apart into Fe3 plus. Okay, so always remember to include the charge and that it's aqueous, and you also have to include and make sure it's balanced. So because there's a three here, that means there's three hydroxides. So we're going to do this, and hydroxide has a negative charge. So that's what the dissociation equation would look like. So another one we can try is barium phosphate. So we've already got the formula here, Ba3, PO4, 2. That's a solid, a slightly soluble solid. So it's going to break apart into three barium ions each with a positive two charge and two phosphate ions, each with a negative three charge. Okay, so that's just some practice with stuff you've learned already. Okay, so let's move into doing some calculations. Now, so far what we've calculated is what's called KEQ, Okay, the um, equilibrium constant. Here we're going to look at the solubility product constant. Now, we go about finding this in the exact same way that we found uh, our KEQ value. So we still use the, if we're referring to uh, AGCL, the dissociation of the, uh, silver chloride, we still take our products, the concentration of each product, which would be a silver ion and the concentration of the chloride ion, and we divide by the reactants. Okay, but what's different uh, with KSP versus KEQ is that the reactants in a dissociation are always solids, right? Because we're dissolving a solid in water. So we we never include a solid in this calculation, right? Because it has a concentration that's constant, it doesn't change. So we never include solids and we never include liquids. We only include gases or aqueous uh, substances. So when we actually go to calculate KSP, you'll see that we only focus on the products, the silver and the chloride, the two, the ions that are that it's breaking up into. So to uh, calculate KSP, we remove that bottom of the fraction because it's a solid 
and we just focus on the products, the two aqueous substances. Okay, so what does this KSP refer to? Well, we call it the solubility product constant. Okay, so it's still a constant. Um, we're going to calculate it in basically the same manner that we calculated KS, KEQ. And again, it's, it's representing um, the equilibrium point, but of a specific type of reaction, right? A dissociation reaction. And in this case, we're focusing on slightly soluble ionic solids. So let's just practice some of the steps um, and we'll take it from there. So we want to find the solubility product for the following, iron 3 hydroxide. So we start by writing the dissociation equation. Iron 3 hydroxide would be FeOH3. It's a solid. And we're going to show it in, at equilibrium with dissociating into its separate ions. Okay. The solubility product, um, we're going to again do that in the same way that we would write out the KEQ. It's just that we will not include the reactant. So it's only going to involve these two. You're still going to use exponents. Um, if there's a coefficient. So we would write this as the concentration of iron multiplied by the concentration of hydroxide, and we'd raise that to the power of three. Right, so we'd have to multiply um, hydroxide's concentration three times because there's three uh, hydroxide ions for every one iron. Okay, so if we actually do go ahead, we haven't yet calculated the value for KSP, but if we do calculate values for KSP, what are they telling us? So what does this number mean in reference to this, and what does any KSP value mean? Well, if we were just comparing these two, this here with the smaller exponent um, would be the larger number and this one's the smaller of the two. Okay, so the larger number just tells us that that particular substance is more soluble. Okay, so the higher the KSP value, the more soluble that particular salt is. Okay, the smaller means it's less soluble. Less of it, it dissolves less easily in water. Okay, so maybe just make yourself a little note. The higher the KSP, the more soluble the substance is. Okay. So let's just do one more dissociation equation and then we'll actually do um, some calculating now that we know how to write the KSP equation. So silver bromide, if we're showing it dis dissociating, silver bromide would look like this. It's a solid. It's at equilibrium and it breaks apart into silver ion and the bromide ion. Okay, so what kind of calculations could you see with this? Well, there's one, the first type we're going to look at is the calculating the KSP when we know the solubility, molar solubility, in moles per liter of a salt. So if we know what that is, um, of the salt that's dissociating. 
So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to write the dissociation equation and the KSP expression, and then we're going to calculate the concentration of each ion, um, and then just substitute that into our KSP equation and solve. So we've got a magnesium fluoride. First, let's write that out. Okay, so that breaks apart into magnesium and two fluoride ions. Okay, we're told here that, so we're given a specific temperature because we know temperature affects equilibrium. So at this particular temperature, the solubility of MgF2 is 2.8 times 10 to the negative 4 moles per liter. Okay, so that's just telling us that when the solution is saturated, that's how much, how many moles of this solid can dissolve in a liter of water. Okay, so knowing that, we can figure out the concentrations of the ions just based on stoichiometry. Okay, so if we know that MgF2 has this um, concentration or solubility, right, when it's, when it's a saturated solution, then it's a one-to-one -one ratio with the magnesium ion and a one-to-two ratio with the fluoride ion. Okay, so we can just simply take this number and figure out these concentrations just using the mole ratio. Okay, so let's first though get our KSP equation and then we'll do that step. So it would look like this, Mag concentration of magnesium ion multiplied by concentration of the fluoride ion squared because there's two of them. Okay, so what are the concentrations? So the concentration of each ion, well, in our equation, balanced equation, we saw that there's one magnesium ion, right? So the molar ratio is one to one. So if we know the concentration of the magnesium fluoride, it's going to be the same for the magnesium ion. Oops, that's a four. And for the fluoride ion, well, there's twice, for every one magnesium um, ion, there's two fluoride ions. So what we have to do is we have to double this concentration. And that would equal 5.6 times 10 to the negative 4. Okay, so now it's just a matter of substituting in. So our KSP, we already wrote it out, was equal to concentration of magnesium times the concentration of hydroxide, or oops, not hydroxide, fluoride. And that one's squared. So now I'm just going to substitute in these concentrations. So we said the concentration of magnesium is 2.8 times 10 to the negative 4, and fluoride is 5.6. And we're going to square that one. Okay, so if we calculate that out, we get 8.8 .8 times 10 to the negative 11. Now, because this is a constant, we don't include units. Just like for KEQ, we're just looking for the number. Okay, so we have a, a relatively small KSP here because it's to the power of negative 11. So that means it's telling us that it's not very soluble, low solubility. So let's try another one. We've got um, calcium sulfate. So let's 
show the dissociation of calcium sulfate. So, calcium and there, it's a one-to-one -one ratio here. Okay, so we are told that this is the molar solubility of calcium sulfate. So when this and a saturated solution, this is how many moles of calcium sulfate you'd find per liter. So using stoichiometry, we can see that it's just a one to one to one ratio. So if this is how many moles of calcium sulfate we have, we also have this many moles of calcium ion and this many moles of the sulfate ion. So I'm just gonna write that like this. Calcium, concentration of calcium, 2 plus is equal to the concentration of sulfate, 2 minus, which is this 4.9 times 10 to the negative 3 moles per liter. Okay, so KSP is simply taking these products and multiplying their concentrations. There are no exponents here. Okay, so now I'm just going to plug in those numbers. And when I calculate that, I get 2.4 times 10 to the negative 5. Again, no units because it's a constant. Okay, so pretty straightforward. These ones are not too difficult to figure out. So let's look at a second type of problem. And this time we're going to go back to our ice tables to find the solution. Or I shouldn't say the word solution, to find the answer. So I won't read through the steps. We'll just do the steps as we go. Okay, so this time, the difference here with these types of problems is that we're um, given the KSP value um, and we're asked to find the concentrations. Okay, so uh, this one says KSP for PBCL2 at 25 degrees Celsius is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 6. Calculate the solubility of a saturated solution of PBCL2. Okay, so we're looking for what is that molar solubility or that concentration like we were given in the last um, couple examples. What is that um, solubility of PBCL2? Okay, so we'll start in the usual way. We're going to write PBCL2 is a solid and it dissociates into lead with a positive 2 charge and two chloride ions, each with a negative charge. There we go. Okay, so the KSP expression is simply this. Oops. And the chloride ion we're going to square. Okay, so we do, because we don't have any information about um, what these concentrations are, we have to set up an ice table. So our ice table would look like this. Whoops. And again, we're only dealing with the products in this case. So the PB and the CL minus. All right. So remember I stands for initial. So when this reaction begins, when you first add the lead to chloride to the water, 
the concentration of the ions is zero because it hasn't yet dissolved. Nothing has dissociated. So we start with initial concentrations of zero. For the change, we're going to use x to represent the change because we have nothing, no other information that we can use. So again, we do that in the same way that we've done in the past. We know that the reactants are going to show, in this case, a positive change. So because I just have one mole of lead, I'm going to put plus X. And because I have two moles of chloride ions, I'm going to put plus 2X. So then at equilibrium, these become X and 2x. So now I'm just going to substitute the x and the 2x into the KSP um, equation. So I'll just rewrite that first of all. Okay, so now I was given a value for KSP at the beginning, so I'm going to put that in. And for the lead 2 ion, I'm going to put in an X. And for the chloride ion, I'm going to put in a 2X, and that one's squared. Okay, so Let's just combine these values and simplify. So 2x squared become or 2x times 2x becomes 4x squared, and 4x squared times x becomes 4x cubed. So now we just have to solve for x. So our first step in doing that would be to divide both sides by 4. So this becomes uh, 4 times 10 to the negative 7 would equal x cubed. I'm just going to move this over a bit because I need to write something else in here. And if we want just x, we need to take the cube root of x cubed. So whatever we do to one side, we do to the other. So cube root cancels cube. So I would end up with 7.37 times 10 to the negative 3. And that's the value for x. Okay, so what do I do with this value? Well, um, the question actually simply asked what the solubility of a saturated solution of PBCl2 is. So by figuring out x, we've actually already figured that out because um, if I go back to my ice table, x represents the concentration of the um, lead 2 ion. And if we look at our balanced equation, it's a one-to-one -one ratio between the lead to chloride and the lead to ion. Okay, so if you've figured out the concentration of the lead to ion, you've also figured out the solubility of that saturated solution. Okay, so I'm just going to write that here. Solubility of saturated solution of PBCl2 equals 7.37 times 10 to the negative 3 moles per liter. But we can also, sometimes questions would also ask you, what are the concentrations of the ions? So if they did, um, you would just... Um, you would just basically use those the value of x to figure it out. So let's say we wanted to know the concentration of the lead 2 ion. Well, it in our ice table was equal to x, so therefore its value is this, just the value of x. 
and if we want the concentration of the chloride ion, well, the ice table we had set up was equal to 2x, so we would just do this. Okay, so that one would equal 1.5 times 10 to the negative 2 moles per liter. So those are three different things you could calculate after doing this question. All right, let's finish up here with uh, another problem. Okay, so this one says, calculate the equilibrium concentration of a saturated solution of CaF2 if this is our KSP value. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to write the dissociation. So that means we get one calcium ion for every two fluoride ions. Okay, and because all we're given is the KSP, we need an ice table to solve this. So calcium and fluoride. All right, so like just like before, um, initially these concentrations will be zero. Okay, because nothing's dissociated at the beginning. The change we're just going to do in the same way. So we're going to use, pay attention to the balanced equation. So here it would be plus x. Here it would be plus 2x. And so very similar to the last question. So this becomes x and this becomes 2x. All right, so my KSP, I'm going to write it out. Calcium, concentration of calcium times the concentration of fluoride squared. And then I'm going to plug in what I know. I know the question told me here's my KSP value. And I'm just going to substitute these values in. X and 2X. So this is going to simplify to the same value, 4x cubed. So I'm going to solve for x in the same way as I did the last time. Divide by 4, divide by 4. Uh, so this becomes 9.75 times 10 to the negative 12 equals x cubed. Those would cancel. And then I'll take the cube root of both sides. Okay, so the cube root is 2.14 times 10 to the negative 4. Okay, so um, the equilibrium concentration of the CAF2 is equal to 2.14 times 10 to the negative 4 moles per liter. So that's what the question asked. But we can go ahead and also, just for practice, calculate the concentrations of each ion. So calcium is equal to x, therefore it's equal to the same. And the concentration of the fluoride ion is equal to 2x. So we're just going to multiply that value by 2. So that would be 4.3 times 10 to the negative 4 moles per liter. Okay, so those are some values you can get out of this question. Okay, the very last thing I'm going to show you just really quick here before we finish up 
is sometimes um, a question will ask you to express your concentration in grams per liter um, instead of moles per liter. So typically we show the concentration in moles per liter and we call that the molar concentration of a solution. But you can also express solubility in a mass concentration. And that would just be grams per liter instead of moles per liter. So you can easily convert, once you know the, uh, the solubility in moles per liter, it's a simple calculation to get it to grams per liter. So let's just practice a couple. So we have 0.75 moles per liter. We want to show that in grams per liter. So we simply cal uh, cancel moles by putting it on the bottom, grams on the top, and we use the molar mass for calcium chloride. Okay, so if I calculate the molar mass, so calcium's mass plus two times chlorine's mass, I get 110.91 grams. Moles will cancel, and I do 0.75 times that molar mass to give me 83.8, oh, whoops, 1.8 grams per liter. Okay, notice liters is still on the bottom, so all I've done is converted from moles to grams. I can do, uh, I can go the other way as well. If I have a value in grams per liter, it's just the reverse calculation. Grams on the bottom, moles on the top. This is sodium nitrate, so I would add up those sodium's mass plus nitrogen's mass plus three times oxygen, and that actually works out to 85. Grams would cancel, and if I divide, I get 0.3 moles per liter. Okay, so you can work on worksheet number, um, I think it's called worksheet number one for the solubility equilibrium.